Hello and thank you for joining us today. Whenever it happens to be, if it's live, great. If it's not live, that's great too. But regardless of whether or not you're watching this live or you're watching it later on in life, what I want you to do is step number one, sign in. And the little comment thing, yeah, that little bar right there, the blank bar, and you have to touch on the keys and you know make letters appear. Tell us where you're at. Where are you on planet Earth? And what would be great if some of you would actually share this instead of being stingy and keeping it all to yourselves. So there you go. Step number one, sign in, tell us where you are. Step number two, share this with at least one like-minded individual. Step number three, drink your coffee. Mmm, right. yeah. I don't actually know what coffee is in my Black Rifle coffee mug right now because I didn't brew it. Zachary brewed it this morning. Yes, Zachary the Shipping Ogre he, he's quite the son, you know, he gets up and he goes and he, he brews coffee and it's good stuff. Mm. So, while we are waiting for people to join us, I'm going to do a little bit of show and tell. Now, for some strange reason, apparently, people have not figured out what this gun is yet. See that gun right there? Jared, can everyone see that gun? Yeah. All right. This is the original G23 that was a Christmas gift to me from my beloved bride in 1993. This is the original one, the first year that they offered them to the American public. And since that, since that time, this gun traveled off to see my friend Robbie Barkman at Robar. And Robbie did a little bit of his magic to it. He rounded that off. He put just a little bit of grippy grip on it. Then it came back and it got Dura-coated. All right, this is the frames actually Dura coated, and it got a brand new slide from Lone Wolf Distributors, and it has a threaded barrel from Lone Wolf Distributors. Now, the barrel's a nine millimeter conversion barrel. On top of it is a loophole optic, and you say, What is that monstrosity sticking off the end? Well, this monstrosity sticking off the end here is called a flash can, and it is from a company called KAK Industries, or CAC Industries, or KAK, or whatever you want to say. And no, these things aren't made for handguns. Don't have a stroke. Don't freak out. Don't write letters to your senator. They're actually half by 28 threaded, but they're wide enough, if you can see that, they're wide enough that a 9 millimeter projectile will actually pass through harmlessly. It won't hurt it. Uh, the reason I got this is because I was talking to my friend at CAC, K-A-K. -A -K. How you doing out there? And uh, I was telling him that I was concerned about uh, taming the gas out of these short guns, the AR pistols and AK pistols and so forth, because as you guys know, short barrels, a lot of rifle gas right there in your face, it could be kind of brutal. And I said, if I could push the gas out away, from, I'm always looking for good ways to push the gas from the cartridge away from me, to tame it, what have you. And uh, these are relatively inexpensive, they're called flash cans, and no, they don't have baffles in them, they're not silencers. Uh, but what they do is they direct the gas away from the shooter. Now, I just got one for an AR, a half by 28 thread, and another one, they make one that's 14 by 1 left-handed for AKs. And uh, very, very soon we're going to be doing uh, footage. We'll shoot some footage. We'll go out to the range and we'll share it with all you guys. Does that sound good? So, for all of you freaks out there that are wondering, like, what is that? Uh, that doesn't compute. It has this. But it has that, and it has the Rayleigh thing, and I don't understand. Uh, yeah, it's it's a Glock Generation 3.5, or 2.75, or whatever you want to call it. So, that's it. There you go. Hey, Dave, you watching this morning? Is Dave watching? I bet he's not. I bet he's doing other stuff. But, all right, you guys ready to talk? I'm ready to talk. You ready to listen? What kind of coffee cup is that? Uh, it's the Black Rifle coffee cup. But like I said, I'm not really sure what what hot liquid coffee beverage is inside of it this morning because I didn't brew the coffee. Zach did. Do you remember which um, which was your favorite from Black Rifle? Probably the espresso. Probably the espresso blend was my favorite. Uh, oh, <sighs> see, I have notes for myself, so I remember to tell you guys. <laughs> Shirt. Where'd the shirt come from? Like, I don't, where do we get one of those shirts? You get it from us. 
go to student of the gun gear student of the gun gear or just type in student of the gun and it'll take you to our website and there's little pictures of people in shirts and shirts and stuff and you click on it and then they make one and they send it to you all right so you can go to student of the gun gear.com or just type in student of the gun in your search engine and when you get to the home page go there and do what you do but yes this shirt you can get one of these does that look good Jared? yeah that looks good do my lats look good Working black, on my, black is very slimming. Working on my lats and stuff. For, so for muscles too. Yes, you can get uh, you can get these shirts directly from us now, due to popular demand. They're like, where can I get a shirt like that? Every time I wear this shirt and I'm out in public, people stop me on my way to the bathroom at the restaurant. Hey, dude, where can I get a shirt like that? Oh, I like your shirt. I've had one person total not like my shirt in the entire time that I've had it. And that person can go fornicate themselves. So there you go. All right. Ready? Are we ready? Oh, before I begin, the news. Uh, we've got new ways for you to listen to Student of the Gun Radio. If for some strange, crazy reason you're watching this video and you said, what's a Student of the Gun Radio and where do I find it and how is it? Well, we've been on iTunes for a long time, Podcast Republic, uh, iHeartRadio, Podcast Gallery, Pocket Gallery, all that. Well, we are now available to listen for free. Well, if you have the apps, whatever. SoundCloud. How many of you youngins out there use SoundCloud? Well, there's like 175 million people using it per month. So somebody out there is using SoundCloud. You can listen to Student of the Gun episodes now on SoundCloud. Also, YouTube. You say, I don't do all that app stuff, and I don't do this, and I don't do that. Okay, great. Does your device, does your laptop, your iPad, does it access YouTube? It does? All right. Well, you can listen to Student of the Gun Radio now via YouTube. Just click play, start doing your stuff. Uh, tune in, the Tune In app, T-U-N-E-I-N. The Tune In app, that's another way that you can listen to Student of the Gun, free for nothing, 24-7, on demand, anywhere on planet Earth. And according to my show notes, that's all I have to remind you of today. So... Welcome to Morning Mindset. I am your host, Professor Paul Markle, and let's talk about stupid human tricks. Now, some of you guys, and I'm hoping a lot of you, uh, read the article that we released yesterday called Tactical Masturbation, Top 3 Stupid Human Tricks. And the impetus for that uh, was a conversation that I had with a, a good friend of mine. Uh, it was a text conversation. But he said, it's nearly impossible for a dedicated serious firearms instructor to get their message out on YouTube because of all the stupid human tricks uh, that are that bury everything else and I said yeah you're, you're probably right then I watched a a clip of a guy who was he was getting ready to do I'm sure you guys saw it as it's been around on Facebook and YouTube and stuff but it was an indoor shooting match. I don't know if it was IDPA or... I don't think it was IDPA. It might have been IPSC or whatever. Some kind of shooting competition. And they were inside. And the guy went, went to load his gun. And they're like, shoot her, load and make ready. So he takes an empty gun out of his holster because that's the best way to do it is to have empty guns. And he puts a magazine in and he racks the slide and the, and the gun goes, kapow! And, and the guy's like, stop! Cease fire! Unload, clear, and make safe. So he takes the magazine out, jacks the freaking slide, catches the round in the air. I was like, what the farfing nougan did I just see? Dude just had an accident. Well, and they said, and the guy's like, oh, it wasn't you. Your finger was off the trigger. You know, it must be an equipment malfunction. He's probably got one of these tricky race guns where he went in and screwed around with the trigger and farted with it so it'd be like, you know, 0.7 eighths of an ounce or whatever. I don't know. Uh, but the dude just had an incident, right? Whether it was an ND or an AD or, a, you know, whatever. And so instead of going, whoa, let's treat this with seriousness, we're playing circus time, jacking rounds out and catching them in our hands. Stop that nonsense. I saw that. I was like, oh, it's freaking sweet Buddha. What the hell? Uh, other things that we've seen, and I mentioned it in the article, the racing back to the holster, these habitual press checkers. Like people that, like they press check their gun like twice for every single shot that they fire. 
And I press check it before I put it in the holster. I pull it out of the holster. I press check it. I reload it. And I press check it. And I'm like press checking. I'm in my bedroom at lone at night. You know, at midnight with the with a soft candlelight. And what am I doing? I'm in my bed press checking my pistol. Right, Jared? Would you say that habitual press checkers are like habitual masturbators? Yes. Okay. There you go. So that just happened. But uh, why? The re there's a reason why I write these things. Is I talk about these things because. I've been playing this game. I've been involved in the the armed citizen, professional training, all that, carrying a gun for a living for 30 years now. Like literally 30 years, uh, I started my career in this whole thing. And I've I've actually been a firearms instructor, and I've actually witnessed and taught literally, not figuratively, but literally, thousands of human beings, thousands of human beings in the police, you know, police officers military personnel, moms and pops, kids, teenagers, I mean, pretty much the whole gambit, right? Uh, gates and gays and straights and, and, you know, ups and downs and, and short kids, fat kids, even kids with chicken pox come to Paul Markle and he trains them. Jared, you don't get that, do you? Uh, Oscar Mayer. It's okay. That's all right. I didn't well, even hear what you said. <laughs> I launched into the Oscar Mayer Wiener song, but that's okay. Or, or the Oscar Mayer Bologna. Uh, or hot dogs, whatever. My point is this, and I'll get to my point. Just calm down. It's my this is my time, folks. If you ever if you want to improve, now here's the thing: if your use of firearms is purely for self gratification, uh, if it's a a hobby, if it's something that you just do so that people will think you're cool, uh, if you just carry a gun so you can go to the gun shop and you know, lift up your waistband and say, check that out, brother. You know, if, if, if owning a gun to you is all about self-gratification, then fine. Just tactical masturbate all you want. I don't care. Really, I don't. But, but, however, nevertheless, if you're serious about the martial discipline of owning a gun, if a gun to you is an instrument of liberty, and the reason that you own the gun is because, well, you think that maybe one day I might need to take this piece of hardware and stop a villain from hurting me or my family. And I want to do that as effectively and efficiently as humanly possible. If that is the case, we need to stop adding all these circus maneuvers to our gun handling procedures. Instead of adding lots and lots of different twitches and moves and flips and everything, what we need to do is we need to pare it down till we get to the point where we're only doing the absolute necessary moves and then perfecting those moves. All right? I know it's, it's kind of high science here and we're blowing everybody away, but uh, we're going to talk a little bit more you know, as we progress about stupid human tricks. And I don't have time to get into really hardcore details right now, but uh, and, and for some crazy reason you haven't read the article, you can go to studentofthegun.com. The article is called Tactical Masturbation, Top 3 Stupid Human Tricks. You can read it, you can share it, you can do whatever you want. Uh, it's been shared on Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. So, All right, from me to you. So I heard uh, recently that um, you shouldn't take advice from people that you pay. Oh my God. What are your thoughts on this, Professor Paul? Mm. We're going to do an Ask Professor Paul show. We're, we're, going, to, we're going to go ahead and we're going to address that. I, Jared, I really think that we need to... Let's do it on the radio, because that is like deep in the weed stuff. But all right, the, the for some reason here lately, the advice is being bandied about on the internet that you shouldn't take advice from people that charge you for their advice, like I guess doctors or auto mechanics or firearms instructors, or that you, you shouldn't trust people uh, in the it. And when, when these things go about, it's not about doctors and auto mechanics. It's almost always directed at firearms instructors or professional trainers. That, well, you shouldn't take training advice from somebody that charges you to train with them. Because I don't know why. Well, and what we're going to do, I've made the executive decision, Jared. You ready for my executive decision? Yeah. Next Wednesday. The topic for next Wednesday uh, we're going to talk about that, whether or not it is valid to take professional advice or advice from people who also charge for their services. So that's a little teaser for you guys coming up. Uh, next week on Student of the Gun Radio, we're going to talk about uh, 
How the media covers up for the Muslim rape culture. Yeah, we have evidence. We're going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to talk about, on Monday, we're going to talk about stupid human tricks in detail. And I'm going to give you specific examples of stupid human tricks that I have witnessed with my own eyes. Then Wednesday, we'll talk about should you take advice from professional trainers or should you take advice from people who charge you for their advice or their training or their expertise. So there you go. I think we've gone long enough and I think we need to sit down and actually record some radio. So if we don't have any other questions, any other questions, Jared? Any other comments or concerns? Any homework I need to give the kids? Um, how many people, oh, <laughs> how many people paid Jeff Cooper and then ignored him? Uh, probably a lot. I was just catching up on the comments here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the first thing one of my friends of mine said. He goes, well, I guess that rules out Jeff Cooper. Mm. The sad thing, though, Jared, you say Jeff Cooper, and half of the audience is, boo, flatline. They have no idea who you're talking about. No, I think right now the people that are watching are, are pretty good, mm. but maybe in the future. I don't know. I've, I've met professional gun bloggers who never heard of Jeff Cooper. Well, that's why. Professional gun YouTubers who never heard of Jeff Cooper. Don't know what gun site is. All right, guys. Uh, have a great weekend. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life. And if you haven't gone to studentofthegun.com and signed up yet, you're wrong. So do it.